Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our September Artist Conversations with SJCA. Uh, we've got a good group together today and we have received lots of great topics for discussion. Um, you know, these are sort of new conversations for us. Uh, this program is something that we started doing just in June. And really what we're intending to do is create a space where artists and um, administrators and cultural leaders can come together and just talk. Uh, talk about what you're working on, talk about questions you have, opportunities you might be working on, um, needs you might have. So it's whatever whatever suits, uh, suits you and what you're working on at the moment. Um, it's, it's an opportunity to network. It's an opportunity to share best practices and other information and to um, share resources so that we can build our capacity and focus on the gaps that we don't have resources to fill and advocate for those together um, as a collective South Jersey. So um, with that said, I want to welcome everybody once more. And um, I just want to go around the room real quickly and have everyone say hello and your name um, and tell us where you're, where you're hailing from this afternoon. I will call out your names um, because I have the the master Brady Bunch Square here. So um, let's start with Mark Morgan from Morristown Theater. Thank you very much. Uh, I am the producing artistic director of the Morristown Theater Company, finishing up our 19th season and trying to prepare for our 20th season in uh, 2022. Wow. Okay. And Danielle? Hi, everyone. <laughs> A little We're, bit of feedback. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let me turn it down. Sorry. Um, I'm Danielle Cartier. Um, my studio is in Kansas, New Jersey. Um, I'm an artist, an educator in South Jersey. Um, I teach at Stockton and I do murals and public art all throughout South Jersey. Great. Thanks for joining us, Danielle. Okay. Joni? Oh, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Um, Joni Sancherico, I live in Tom's River. Um, I mostly try to do public art, but right now I don't have any projects, so I'd love some. Um, nice to see you all. Hey, thanks for joining us. Okay, Rachel? Hi, I'm Rachel Citrino. I'm a, a studio artist and independent curator uh, in Rhodestown. If you don't know where Rhodestown sits between Salem and Bridgeton, it's this little historical town. Oh. And um, working on a lot of things now. And uh, I, I recently moved from Philadelphia to uh, have my studio here full time. So very nice. that's where I am. Well, we're I'm, glad planning, I'm, I'm planning a big mural project here on, on the property. And, um, and I'm hoping to work with Gallery 50 and a few other artists. So there'll be some openings for uh, artists who may want to learn how to do murals. We may be working with Henry Bermudez and also Danielle Cartier, who's oh. very experienced. That's fantastic. Uh, Sounds like a yeah. great opportunity. Yeah. So we'll Thanks. keep you posted. Definitely do. We'll share that out for you. OK. Hi, and Brenda? I'm a cellist by profession. I live in Cape May County. I am the cellist in Cape May County, all one of me. So it's a titch lonely down here. Um, from what I've been able to figure out, there are about four professional classical musicians that live in Cape May County. Um, I play for orchestras, do a lot of freelancing for weddings and such, but I also do unaccompanied uh, shows. So that's kind of what I'm looking to, to do more of and promote more of. Great, thanks, Brenda. Okay, Judith. Hi, um, my name is Judith and I am a new uh, artist who's uh, just been um, pretty much starting out in the past few months and I wanted to join this group to keep on learning. Um, I'm going to be in the Cherry Hill Harvest Festival um, 
and uh, I want, I, I've been painting a lot of things, um, taking classes. Um, my mentor is Jennifer Vrains. And um, yeah, I just would love to hear what people have to say and um, find out more. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure we'll we'll be able to get you lots of good information and, and resources to get you started. Okay, um, Tom. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Wilson. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I am the lead producer for the Mill Race Theatrical Company located in Mount Holly, New Jersey, about 30 minutes outside Philadelphia. Uh, we specialize in education. Uh, and we produce three shows a year uh, that really focus on uh, customer interaction. So uh, I have a background in immersive theater, which means that the guests are given characters as part of the story. And uh, I also do that outside the theater as well uh, for a for-profit company. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Tom. Okay, I, Diane, did I get you? Are you the last? I think you might be the, the very last one. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Diane Roberts here at the Riverfront Renaissance Center for the Arts. I'm the executive director here. Um, of course, we do exhibits. We've been uh, doing bi monthly or monthly exhibits um, on our website. We have that schedule. Uh, we have group shows currently. Um, the Strobe South Jersey artists are in our main gallery until. October 9th, Danielle has a piece down in the sister exhibit at the Rowan College of South Jersey, which is very nice. And I know Joni and I don't know if Rachel did. I yes, I have, a I have a piece yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, because you had the larger pieces down that way. So we had a different, very vibrant show. Um, but yes, we also have open calls for art for somebody such as Judith to check out um, whatever fits in and feel free to check the website and contact us as we do the exhibits as we said, monthly and bi-monthly coming up. Uh, we also use our space for public events and we have a large 6,000 square foot space in Millville. Um, we have a couple of theater groups coming in in the next couple months doing shows here, you know, to a smaller, more intimate audience. So if anyone's looking for a space um, and one of our new neighbors is the Hands Up Silent Theater, another nonprofit working with the hearing impaired and they've got a big following. So we're gathering, we like to work with partners as well as individual artists. Um, we do workshops. We also look for teachers, artists, instructors, and public art projects come up through our Glastown Arts District director. So there's other opportunities. And with a lot of the funding that has increased in the last year with relief funds and the state council funding, we're looking forward to doing more classes, um, exactly that to employ artists to teach. So if anyone's interested with ideas, please contact me. Wonderful. Thank you, Diane. And make sure you send me any of those opportunities too. And we can make sure that we're putting them on the website and, and getting them out in the newsletter for everyone to, to see. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Wonderful. Well, now that we've all taken a moment to introduce ourselves, um, I wanted to share real quickly um, a slide that shows some of the topics that were suggested with the registration forms and from feedback uh, given in prior sessions. The number one thing requested is that you wanted to share. You wanted to share what you're working on and hear what everyone else is working on. Almost everyone who responded to the survey said that that was a priority for them during these sessions. So we'll make sure that there is time for that um, during the introductions in a brief way. And then um, at the end, we can have uh, more sharing if, the, if there's time left. And then everyone also indicated that they um, were interested in funding and legislative updates. So obviously how we're gonna pay for all of these programs and exhibits is always a primary concern for artists and for um, administrators and organizations. So there are a couple of resources that I can point you to, and certainly we can talk um, when there are particular legislative updates or uh, funding opportunities that arise. And um, we did that in June when we talked about the individual artist fellowship uh, from the State Council for the Arts. Uh, and so when there are major opportunities like that, we will discuss them in detail, but I can give you a few other places as well to keep up to date on those things. Um, Art Pride heads up most of the legislative 
um, updates and advocacy uh, campaigns and their website is fantastic at um, outlining everything that's going on and giving you the summary so that you don't have to weed through 4,000 pages of legal legalese and uh, legislative documents. Um, whoops, I'm sorry, we're not, we're not there quite yet. Okay, um, marketing and social media, promotional partnerships were also very interesting to attendees. So we can talk about some of those things um, in more detail so that I can get a better understanding of specifically what, um, what kinds of conversations are we looking for? Do we want to have maybe a guest speaker pop in and address a particular topic if everyone is interested in um, say building an aspect of social media or a new social media platform like Snapchat or TikTok or you know, using some of these uh, platforms that we might not be as familiar with. Um, technical resources as well to develop virtual programming and um, other virtual tools that was mentioned, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't in the top, it didn't make the top three. The top three were sharing, funding, and legislative updates and marketing. Um, people also wanted to talk about operations and best practices, so working remotely, uh, finance, capacity building, the, the nuts and bolts of, of the business of art, so we can talk about some of those things as well if there are specific uh, areas of interest, and um, I think that we collectively have a lot of resources to offer each other, and then there are a couple of other online forums that I can point everyone to, um, which I listed links in the agenda for you, um, that are also good repositories of information and communities that, that can share um, with you if you have specific questions. Um, networking with communities was a topic, so um, outreach to communities that we haven't really been representing or been working with much in the past. SJCA has been doing a lot of that through the uh, cultural asset mapping project, um, but we do, um, you know, the map is sort of the tangible face of a lot of outreach and a lot of connection and a lot of conversations that we're having with partners and groups throughout the field, uh, so we can certainly talk about ways that we can help artists to uh, engage more with the other cultural assets in their community, other artists, other organizations, community groups who might be looking for artists to do programming. Uh, so there are lots of ways we can, can work on that. Um, racism in the arts and why ethnic cult, but ethnic cultural thing doesn't work. Uh, so we, we do wanna make sure that, you know, everything we do is through the filter of DEAI and that we're always thinking about inclusivity and equity. Um, but specifically, we, we should be having some of these hard conversations. And I think when we do that, we may try and partner with some other um, groups and organizations that are having similar conversations or our subject matter experts to sort of help guide us through that because those are tough conversations. And, um, for them to be productive, I feel like we do need a toolkit and a uh, shared language that we're all using so that we're um, communicating about those things effectively. Um, it, there was some interest in identifying businesses that display local art for sale, uh, finding collectors, best art shows or websites to develop collector followings um, and those sorts of things. I think, um, you know, Diane, you probably have a lot of resources that you can um, offer in the way of, of helping artists to develop uh, ways of finding places to show their work and uh, develop collector followings. So um, perhaps we can, can involve you in that part of the conversation. But I just wanted to share with everyone that these were kind of the topics that rose to the top uh, after our prior conversations. And I'm going to keep a running list. Every conversation we have will be followed by an evaluation, you know, asking if there were top, other topics that we want to address. And so I will continue to monitor what is most of interest and most relevant. And that is kind of what will guide our conversations, but they are open-ended and they can go wherever we need them to go. Um, and we can even, if you are interested as these groups grow, um, break off into breakout rooms within the session. So you can have sidebars with um, you know, a, a few of the artists who are really interested in a particular topic or we can even talk about um, you know, breaking off a subgroup and, and starting a little separate meetup if there are, say, theaters interested in something in particular or artists that wanna work on uh, developing their collector base or something like that. So um, these, this is a sort of launching pad for these conversations so that we can understand um, you know, if we need to, to broker other small meetups to help move those interests forward. Um, so, with that said, I think we can start 
um, talking about some of these things. I, on the agenda that I um, provided you in the email, and that's also attached here with the um, chat box, I wanted to um, just give you some resources that could help support some of the questions and topics that were suggested. So as far as sharing, obviously these forums are great for that, and we can certainly take time and carve out ample time to do that. Uh, but there are also online forums in which you can share and connect with other artists as well, even when you're not in a session like this. Um, a couple of them, SJCA has an artist um, member Facebook group that you can join and post questions there and talk with your fellow artists. That's just getting started. So um, if you wanted to um, pop in there, I did include the link. Um, you're certainly welcome to post questions or um, share what you're working on, your latest work, ask for critiques, whatever you, you want to do, that's your space to interact with each other. Um, there are also other groups on Facebook, such as Artists Supporting Artists, which is run by another one of our members, Matt Dixon, and that is a really great and active group where a lot of sharing happens about opportunities and current work and things that are happening in the field. Uh, so I would suggest taking a look at those. Um, forums and um, you know if you come across any on your own let us know I'd like to keep a running list of these I think it would be really helpful for artists in the field to have um, a sort of baseline of Facebook groups that they should be connecting with if they're looking to engage with the community and um, that's something that we can house on the website or we can start a shared drive even um, to house information like this so you guys can get back to it whenever you you need to access it. Um, as far as funding and legislative updates goes, um, there's always a lot happening, especially now um, with the increase uh, in funding. I feel like there have been so many legislative updates that could make your head spin. Um, we depend heavily on Art Pride to keep us informed, and we mostly share their uh, updates because they are so comprehensive that we couldn't um, possibly do a better job than, than they are already doing. Uh, so I wanted to show you, I put some links on the uh, agenda, but I'll share my screen real quickly with you and just show you the page that I think is probably the most useful if you're looking to stay updated on advocacy and legislation. Um, their arts bill tracker, it summarizes these very lengthy and complicated bills so that you, um, you, know, you know the bill number, you know it, in general terms, what the bill is addressing, and, and you can click on it to get more detailed information. This gives you, um, you know, a summary of, of everything that is, is currently active. And it also um, prompts you to engage and to take actions like thanking legislators when they do give you a budget increase or listen to, uh, you know, their constituents in the field because we want to make sure that we are um, saying thank you as much as we're, we're asking for help. And so they have opportunities like that here and they make it very easy to do those things with embedded forms. You just fill it in and it, it will help you find out who your representatives are and give you some text to start with um, for these emails. So it's their website is incredibly helpful and Art Pride is um, the place to go if you're interested in, in anything and everything advocacy and legislature uh, for New Jersey. So they're having their annual meeting uh, on the 26th, which I also wanted to just point out to everyone. I did put in the agenda um, that their, their annual meeting was coming up on the 26th of October. Uh, so you can register for that if you're interested in hearing um, what they've been working on, which is always a lot. I just attended a, a sessions that they're having with mayor, local mayors and in South Jersey municipalities and um, North Jersey municipalities too, uh, to, to help connect artists and arts organizations with, with mayors who are looking to engage and, and grow the arts and cultural programs offered in their region. So they're, they're always working to help um, you know, bolster and, and support the, the community. So um, that is the fantastic resource. And then, um, you know, we will always include in our bulletins and um, e-blasts as well when things are happening. Facebook as well, we share that out there. So make sure you're following on Twitter and Facebook um, to get things in the most expeditious way if you want to keep up to date. Um, and the next, the next topic was marketing. And so a lot of you said that you were interested in talking about marketing and social media and promotional partnerships. Uh, I just wanted to start that conversation here and understand a little more about 
the specific questions that you might have so we can determine whether we need to bring in some subject matter experts to to help us out so is anyone who suggested that do you want to chime in and and let us know what exactly we we need some help with or want to talk about no one so who is who is great at social media by show of hands who is, thinks they've they've got social media covered and really feels comfortable that they're engaging with everyone as much as possible i saw diane's hand danielle's hand i would not raise my hand uh, it is not my strong suit so i would be interested in hearing either diane or danielle tell us um you know what they think they're doing right what what makes you feel like um you're seeing engagement with what you're putting on social media tell us your your tricks and secrets and we'll get the ball rolling there Either go ahead Diana. danielle if you're first <laughs> oh god oh no um i guess i just try to post something every day um i a really good tool that i use for social media is canva it's an app um, and it helps you design graphics. I'm not a graphic designer, but it helps me design like cool graphics and put text on pictures. It's called Canva, like canvas without a S. Um, so I would, that's a, that's a great tool I use. Um, and then just really kind of keeping up with it every day, you know, I'm sure. But that, that's a really practical tool on um, the Canva tool. And I learned that from a student. So Canva is excellent. And for those of you that are nonprofits, they do offer a free nonprofit membership to Canva, their pro membership. So make sure that you're applying for that if you're if you're not using Canva or if you're thinking about using Canva. Um, many of the services, JotForm and Canva and um, lots of, of other software that helps us do the work we do offers nonprofit discounts. So it's always good to ask, even if they don't advertise that they, they do have one. A lot of times you will be able to get a discounted rate. Um, okay. Now you said you, you post every day. What are the platforms that you focus on most? I feel like there's a sort of shift, you know, it was Facebook and Instagram. And now I feel like there's a lot of new players on the field, uh, that we might not all be so familiar with. So can either of you speak to the platforms that you focus on most or like what you think the next big, big thing is that we should all be focused on? I post on Instagram the most because that's where I have the most following. Um, but that, yeah. And I think it suits itself most for visual um, kind of representation, like a image. Um, so I post on Instagram the most and I just try to keep things updated. Like, with my website and all that, you know. Okay. And Diane, where's your focus in social media? Do you, is it heavily Instagram or do you use other platforms too? Well, I look at like Danielle as an artist, it's, you know, you should focus on the more visual ones like Instagram and things like that. Um, but in our case, as an organization, we have to look at our artists and our audience. So we do focus a lot on Facebook, but because you can do the both posts, like if you go on Instagram and share also on Facebook, I try to do that. Um, trying to get in a better habit of doing that because I tend to forget about Instagram for our, our biggest reaches on Facebook because our audiences tend to be a little older um, and our artists are a mix. So it's, it's you know, well done. But just as Danielle said, I, I try to post every day. I try to repost some of our, you know, collaborative partner events. Mm -hmm. Uh, that brings in a different pool of people. So not only events where you're maybe showing your art as an individual artist, but some of the other arts things happening, those people looking at that might then see your work um, doing the tags like on Instagram, mm -hmm. trying to think of, you know, relevant tags to put on there. But again, the consistency of a, a daily post, one of the more important things too, and I come and go with this, you get so excited and you want to put all kinds of photos on like you know six or seven photos it's best and you get the best results with one image when you post and a short you know obviously on instagram that i'm talking facebook and things like that um putting a link if you need to you know is helpful 
it just takes time to develop, invite people. If you personally run your organization's page, you personally can invite people to like that business page you have. And that's how you can really develop and encourage, you know, if you have someone else in the administrative side of like handling social media, I do it all myself. I'm the, you know, the only one doing that right now. So I, I kind of been in that circle. Um, but yeah, Instagram is very important for individual artists. And I'm sure most of you know that um, little videos, videos have a great reach. Um, you don't want to do it all the time, but just putting up, like I walk around here and do my little video of the gallery. Certainly it's not the best way to show the art, but people are intrigued by that. So even if you do a little video of your studio or, you know, work in progress, oh, yeah. I'm sure Danielle does that. And some mm -hmm. of the others, if you're on there, well, do a quick little, it's, it's yeah. worth investing in one of those little arm things to put your phone up mm -hmm. there yeah. and doing even a time lapse type video. It's intriguing to people then. So, and people yeah. like to see you too. Yes. Like they want to see your work and what you do, but they like to see you like pictures. Like, I don't like to post a lot of pictures of myself, but they, people do like to see pictures of yourself with your work and kind of put, you know, a face to the work too is good. Personal. Um, yeah. You know, and it's good to have someone from the outside also kind of help you kind of curate this. Um, I think also, and also something you said, Diane, about reposting whenever I'm, you know, working with an organization or what, or whatever, um, you know, a gallery, I'm always like tagging them in it because I want, you know, people to go there and see it. Um, like Diane said, you know, thinking about the hashtags because, you know, hashtags are going to create more hits. Um, and then also posting at like high volume times of day, like during dinner time or during lunchtime when people yeah. are like scrolling through content. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a big point. Um, we have, we use constant contact for our email that goes out and they suggest times, but I, you know, learned just like you said, the best time is like Sunday at 6 PM. People are looking mm -hmm. at their phone or any time after five o'clock, people are sitting there at their, after dinner, checking out mm -hmm. their phones at 7 PM, but in lunchtime too, I never really thought about it, but that's a nice little uh, reminder too. So yeah, to get a bigger audience. So that's, and it is about consistency. Keep putting stuff out there and eventually people and you mentioned some of the artist groups um as an artist you know you share too there's the uh, depending on where you live the artist guild of cape may i think it is stan spurlack ran, runs that you mentioned matt dixon's site um strobe sj if you're a member of that obviously he reposts things and bill horn with that um you know and if you're involved at our center like you said you tag the gallery and things like that so it certainly helps Great. So it sounds like um, we may want to think about developing a, a collective list of Facebook groups that, that artists and, or, and organizations should join if they're interested in kind of keeping up on, on social media, as well as maybe thinking about developing collective hashtags we can all use so that everyone's putting, you know, South Jersey Arts and Culture or SJ Arts and Culture or something. And then that way, if we're all putting those hashtags on there, they will, you know, start to trend. And that's a way we can connect with each other and start to um, build, uh, you know, on, on those shared promotions. So um, is that something that we would be, in, that the group think thinks would be idea. useful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think probably the, the best way to approach that, I have a, a list that I have for SJCA. I can start the ball rolling by put, making a, you know, a document out of that. I will start a G drive, a shared uh, Google drive that I will send the link to everyone in this group um, or anyone who attends these conversations and you will be able to you know, access the drive and the information can be in, will be in there. You can download it and save your own copy or if you want the most um, up-to-date version, you can go to the, the shared drive and access it. And if you have anything likewise that you wanna share with artists in the community and store there, you can certainly send that my way and I'm happy to upload that for you. And in that way, then we can share, you know, if you have a, a good template for a flyer for a pro, you know, an exhibit, if you have, you know, a, a good, um, you know, giving Tuesday text that you want to share or something along those lines. Um, I think I've been doing this with the County Cultural and Heritage offices and it's been very helpful to have a central place for information to live and be able to be accessed by everyone. 
Um, so if, if we're interested in developing some common hashtags and common um, Facebook groups that you know people might be interested in, I will work on that as well as the, the shared drive. Um, okay, well, that was that was a great, great conversation topic. Okay, um, so we're, we're about half at the halfway point. Um, we still have a few topics to discuss. So um, a few people I, mentioned. I, I did have a question oh, before we, we jump forward. Sure, go ahead, Tom. So I, I raised my hand before. I have 12 okay. years of marketing experience. I ran a marketing agency. And yeah, you know, now I'm promoting events with like 25,000 people. So social is kind of second network or second nature to me. Oh, and great. I was just wondering, you know, you, if Danielle and Diane are looking at their metrics when they're going through and making these assumptions, are they uh, checking to see when people are engaging with the post as opposed to just you know, letting biases take over? Good question. I, I do check our, our insights on Facebook. That's the main one I check. And yeah, you're right. You, you can see a lot. It is very important to check that. We didn't think of that <laughs> to mention it, but that's uh, definitely worthwhile. Like Instagram, you just look and you see followers and people that click and all that kind of stuff. But on Facebook, that insight manager is quite important. Good point. Absolutely. Yeah, if can if you are using tracking links, to, you can track all that stuff because with social, it's very important to, uh, you know, the chain is you're gaining followers and then you're trying to transform those followers into fans. And fans are people who are engaged with the work. And then you're trying to transform your fans into friends. And it's the friends who will follow and buy your art because it's you. And I believe Danielle was, was making a point that earlier, earlier we were saying uh, you're not just displaying the work, you're displaying the artist who was making the work and personalizing it. And what happens is those, those friends of yours, even if they're virtual friends, are the ones who will pre-buy tickets to your events or, or go on your pre-sale for your artwork you know, without even seeing it because they trust you. And that, at that point, you are the brand. Agreed. Very you mentioned a very important word, brand. Yes, definitely. Every organization and every artist can brand somehow. Like you said, there's a way to personalize and you you brand your 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 work, your image, all of it tied together. So that that's a that's like a catchphrase, but it, you know it or it's a key thing. though. definitely worth saying. Yeah, the the brand is what people think about you. Uh, it's the emotions that you're trying to evoke. And it's kind of like if you say, explain my brand or explain who you think I am in a sentence, that is your brand. And it's kind of hard to, to push that on them. It's kind of like a inception type thing where you are feeding them um, different, you're feeding them your artwork and then having them regurgitate it and, and process it and, and coming back to you. Well, I'm. Thank you for for mentioning the metrics. I think that it's very important to rely on data um, when we're making. We can, you know, we can see things in in the field uh, that we think are happening, but the data can help support that story and make sure that we are making the right the right choices. Now, um, do you have any tools that are your favorites? Being a kind of social media superstar, are there what is what is in your toolkit? Do you post? on each platform individually, or do you use kind of an aggregate poster like Buffer or HubSpot or something along those lines? And what are, you, what are the best ways that we can kind of keep tabs on social media and make sure we're being effective? So uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I think social media is not really great for humanity, but professionally, when I'm working for my clients, uh, I will post individually for each one uh, because the algorithms, they do not enjoy retweets and reposts. So like you were saying, between posting it on Facebook and then or posting it on Instagram and then sharing that on your Facebook feed will not get you the same amount of followers or same exposure to your friends if you just copied it on Instagram and then copied and pasted it onto Facebook. Like that whole retweeting, resharing thing just doesn't work as well. Uh, we use Hootsuite if we needed to uh, 
pre-program a bunch of things. Like, say, let's say, for example, we have a show coming up. We know that uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter users, uh, for the most engagement, they're looking for three consecutive or three posts per week, not necessarily every day. So we'll use Hootsuite to uh, rewrite everything ahead of time, let's say like a month or two ahead of time and have it set to go out at the times that we, that our metrics are telling us that our fans are most likely to engage, whether that's 3 PM on Fridays, uh, like you were saying at dinner time, times where people have more time to just look at it and follow your call to action. Uh, the call to action would be, you know, buy my artwork, share this, you know, get my message out there. Um, and Hootsuite is very good at that because it can cross post on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and a bunch of other social networks that you probably haven't even heard of that aren't really relevant anymore. Uh, but it's a very good tool for that. And for designing, we use uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign. Thank you. Great. Any more questions on social media? Anything we haven't touched on that, that maybe Tone can help us answer if we can't, if we don't have the info? Mark, you had a question? Yeah, I don't know if there is such a person as a Facebook expert or a way to get someone who works for Facebook or uh, to, and not just me, Facebook, maybe one of the other platforms as well, but to maybe address this group and let us ask questions um, individually. I don't think any of us can ever find someone from Facebook to ask things of, but maybe the power of this group uh, could merit uh, getting someone who lives this every day, uh, whose job it is. You know, we all have questions, I'm sure. We all do different things and we check metrics and we try different things and you know, we don't know if there's a better way to do it. Um, it would, that way I think, would be very helpful. Uh, you're you're not going to get somebody from Facebook to reveal the the actual algorithms. Uh, it's, it's against you know they're they're legally bound not to expose those types of things because it's company I, secret. I'm not asking for that. I'm just saying you know we, it, we're talking about different times to post. So is there you know I post something daily on Facebook. Uh, sometimes I get huge amount of hits. Sometimes I get single digit hits. Um, is there advice basically that we could get from these people? Not to reveal any corporate secrets or anything. Yeah, uh, they're not going to tell you that 3 p.m. on a Sunday is, is the best time because they don't know who your audience is. Uh, that's something that you have to look at your insights and your metrics to determine what's best for your audience and then customize it based around that. I would say um, if it's something the group is interested in, I'm sure that we could find a, a social media guru to come and chat with us for a few minutes and just... Um, sort of be a resource for us and, and um, you know, at least talk a little bit more about how to dig in with those metrics and what are the, you know, to identify each of the categories that are outlined in the metrics and help you to understand the big picture because you can look and see, okay, most people open our emails at 3 p.m. But, you know, that in conjunction with some of the other metrics might tell, uh, tell you that a different time to post would be better or, you know, that subject matter matters depending on the time that you're posting. So I think there's a lot of layers there um, and it would be worth a, a separate conversation of understanding how to dissect those metrics so that we're making sure that we understand what we're looking at and we are, you know, reading it correctly and, and utilizing it as best we can, because they are increasingly giving us more and more data uh, on more and more aspects of social media. But if, if you're anything like me, some of it is, is you know, in a, in a foreign language, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's there and I see the chart and it looks great, but I'm not exactly sure, um, you know, how to integrate that into our strategy. So um, I, can, I can look into that, Mark, and see if there's somebody that we can get to come chat with us for sure. Um, if you want a specific review of your own social media, um, I would remind everybody that Catch a Fire is free for all nonprofits in New Jersey. So Robert Wood Johnson Foundation pays everyone's uh, 
dues to to have access to Catch a Fire. And on Catch a Fire, you have professionals that volunteer their time to do things like social media audits or to help you build a content plan or reorganize your chart of accounts or develop a flyer or graphic design for this or plan an event or whatever you're working on. There's hundreds of pre-canned projects there and it is free for all of the nonprofits. So take a look there and see if there's maybe not something where someone can specifically look at your Facebook and your social media and help you to understand you know, your specific story as well. Thank you, that's a great idea. I, didn't, I was not aware of that. Yeah, it's, it's a great tool. I use Catch a Fire all the time. And I, I think there are, you know, whenever I mention it, I, I'm always surprised that how few people know that it's paid for for us. I think it normally costs a couple of thousand dollars for a membership to be able to utilize the service. So it's very nice that we have that here in New Jersey. And um, it's a great, great tool to tap into. Okay. Um, well, let's see, we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, technical I feel like sort of uh, is, is, is overlaps with social media a bit, but um, it looked like there were some questions on developing virtual programs. Is that something that anyone that's here suggested or wants to talk about, Danielle? I wanted to talk about something else, um, not virtual, but maybe um, developing like a, um, op like a South Jersey open studio tour, something like that. Um, there's a Philadelphia open studio tour. Um, you know, we have this, we're developing like this map type thing, right? The South Jersey Cultural Alliance will, um, you know, maybe there's a weekend where, you know, the studios are open of all the artists and, you know, people can come and are invited. So I just wanted to, that was an idea um, that I think would be great to all the artists and all the organizations in South Jersey is just a way to open the doors to the public as, you know, collective, um, you know, arts organizations. There is a Kate May studio tour. Yeah. And um, I think that one of the things you do have to realize is that even doing a Kate May County studio tour, which is coming up here for us in about two weeks, uh, stands for like has organized that that's a good bit of distance and if you're doing and both days you might hit all those studios so you may want to rather than south jersey you may want to limit it to a county or two in a particular area i just think you have to realize just how big south jersey is i'm an hour and 45 minutes out of philadelphia here in Cape well May. the other thing yes <laughs> stands is on october 9th and they've been doing yes. that a while the guild of uh, cape may also arts and bloom salem county does a studio tour they're doing it twice this year. I just got their info. They're having it in the fall as well. Same thing. I did that last well, spring when they did it. And even there, Salem County, very spread out. We in Millville have done a studio, open studio tour just in the Millville area because we have 10 studios upstairs here and there's several downtown, et cetera. But you're right. Uh, what's missing is a Cumberland County artist studio tour because that's where you happen to be. So you're outside of Salem and you're not in Cape May. And it's kind of like, we're like the pocket of not having it. That's a big thing to work on, but it could be done. And it's, it would be a good idea because again, Millville has things, uh, Bridgeton and like that sort of rural area. We go down to the Delaware Bay, even with like Fortescue has artist pockets down there, et cetera. So it would be uh, something we could maybe put a little group together to cover our area which would include you definitely. So it would be a fun project. Is there a directory for Cumberland County artists? Well, I know- be, um, There used to be a directory with the Alliance. Yeah, the, the Heritage and uh, Cultural and Heritage yeah, Commission does, but I don't think it's up to date. Um, okay. We need to contact, yeah, like the different counties, the couple of counties right here and, and maybe throw that together and update that because- right. yeah. Everybody has their little um, listings, but yeah, to kind of group them all. Right. Just, an, you know, that's a huge idea. I just, you know, that's awesome. I'm so, I didn't know about the Kate May Open Studios. That's really amazing how long it's been going on and how cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah, and Salem County Arts and Bloom has been around for many years, and they have a lot, but they do also some not quite art things, but there's a lot of artists out there, Sandra Coberline and a few other 
well-known, you know, kind of artists pull people into their really neat studios out there. But yeah, listening to kind of see what we could come up with. And I think um, the the cultural asset map can help you with that too. Um, if you search the map, you can search by county. So you could see every cultural asset listed in Cumberland. That includes artists and organizations, cultural groups. Um, and that's, it's a great idea. It is a big idea. And South Jersey is a big place. And I think it would be a huge undertaking for one entity to try and do a South wide studio tour. However, I think that it's something that, you know, each of the county cultural and heritage offices could help um, with coordinating. If, if it's something that you, you know, want to do, then if there is a group within each county, we can help you to connect with the county cultural and heritage and find out if there are any um, grants or funding opportunities or other partners within that area that you might want to work with. Um, and certainly it would be fantastic if each county organized their own studio tours, but we all did it at a similar time so that, you know, if you were in any given area, you could either stay focused or you could traverse to a different county and see what was happening in other areas as well. And in that way, then it could be a collective showcase um, without one entity having to take on the burden of coordinating for eight counties full of studios. Um, and we're happy to help with any mapping aspects of that for any county that wants to do that um, because we already kind of have the foundation built in the map and it is uh, fairly easy to kind of pull data sets and, and to help you get an interactive map that would be useful for any studio tours that you're, you, know, you want to develop. So um, I'm happy to make you know, some broker some connections to get that ball rolling on that if that's something you guys want to pursue. Yeah, and what I was going to say, um, actually, we have a paint out exhibit. We have a reception tomorrow night, and Omari Williams from the Cumberland County Cultural and Heritage Commission and Matt Pazarski, um, they will likely be here. Um, I, I'll, I'll kind of pass that by them, but like for us, just our little pocket of Cumberland County, um, because Salem does it. It's we'll see, but you know, maybe talk to them about that type of thing, getting it together. Because Gallery 50, our organization can be like the sort of anchor spots and then go from there, make a list and see what we've got. So anyway, good idea. We'll go on to next. I don't want to take too much time. Well, let me know if you want any um, data sets from me. I mean, the map is great to search on the front end, but I can give you a list that'll be easier to work with if you're you know, looking to to hone in on a certain county of, of contact. So just let me know what you need from us and we're happy to, to support or help you make connections to get the ball rolling on that. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so I think we'll probably hold on to some of these other topics for uh, the next session. I did want to um, share one other thing with you. Um, there were some questions on operations and best practices and, um, you know, these kinds of sessions where you have these conversations and you just, you know, a question is posed and, you know, there are two or three people that have information to offer. There is a software called Givitas, um, which is basically an online reciprocity software. Um, and they have free communities that you can join and pose questions to, to get information if there are aspects of business or art that you um, want to, to see if someone can help you with. I put a link there in the chat. Um, these are general groups and it's free to join any of these groups and test out the software. This is something that SJCA is considering um, integrating into our website redesign to offer the artists community and um, arts administrators a way to connect with each other uh, online. So separate from all the, the noise of Facebook and all the other things, this is your community where you can pose questions to anyone else who is in the um, SJCA membership database, which is a little over 800 um, artists and cultural assets listed throughout the, the Southern counties. So that's, that's a pretty big pool of um, colleagues and peers that can potentially help you. Uh, so I, I was wondering if everyone would at, at their leisure take a moment to just sort of poke around and let me know what your thoughts are on Givitas. If you think it's something you could see yourself using or if you think it might be a useful tool, understanding that we would have our own South Jersey cultural community that would be participating in it. It wouldn't just be anyone from um, the public accessing it. So it would be people, local people, doing similar work and sharing similar interests that would be uh, able to help you. And some of the great things about the software is that it maps those connections. So we would actually be able to show a visual map of how 
the connections within the South Jersey cultural community are strengthening and who are who are the people that have resources to offer and um, where where are the hotbeds of activity um, and generosity in, in the South. So I find it very interesting um, from a data perspective and from an opportunity perspective to connect um, when we're not in these sessions. You know, conversations are great, but not everyone's available at 1 p.m. on a Thursday afternoon. Um, so I want to make sure that we are also providing online opportunities for, for you guys to connect with each other, even if we're not, uh, you know, in the virtual room with you, so to speak. Okay, um, so just a couple of other little snippets. Um, make sure that you fill out the survey after today's session. Let me know uh, if you found it useful. If not, why not? What would you like to see in a, a future session and all of those good things that you fill out on your surveys. Um, our annual meeting is coming up October 21st. I would love for all of you to join us. We're gonna have a talk from uh, springboard for the arts about collaboration within the artist community and how that can help everyone thrive so i'm very excited about that uh, and there will be a workshop activity associated with that too so you come away feeling like you um, have practiced what you've been learning about uh, the next meeting for the artist conversations will be at the end of october october 28th and you'll see an invite and info on that coming out diane I just want to say thank you to theater people and performing artists. I know us visual artists seem to have hijacked this one a little bit. <laughs> we appreciate you being here and thanks to you, Tom, for your input on the social media. You seem to be much more uh, advanced with that and, and thank you for that. And Mark and Brenda and everyone else, Paula, I know Judy, uh, Judith is a visual artist and Joni and Daniel and Rachel, all of us. So. Sorry about that, <laughs> but thank no. you for participating in Mark, it looks like he has something. Uh, I just wanted to add at the very beginning, I just said who I was. Pick up boys from Boston. Sorry, Alexis, go ahead. Oops. <laughs> Can I be heard now? That was yeah. weird. Um, I just wanted to add at the beginning, I just said my name and the organization. I didn't do any kind of update or commercial uh, since I was first. Uh, I just wanted to add that we are in the middle of auditioning. Uh, we, Any one of you, if you want to be in a show, we are doing Elf the Musical in December. Uh, and we are doing uh, the company that theaters often pay money to for the rights to musicals. Music Theater International in New York is doing something very nice. Uh, the second week in the November, they're letting any theater company in the world have free access to a certain set of songs. So you can do a concert without having to pay royalties. So we're doing that November 12th, 13th and 14th and having auditions for that as well. And Elf is ages six and up. We're saying 10 and up for the, uh, all to, it's called All Together Now, the cabaret. Um, but any of you, if you have theater experience or even if you don't uh and or if you know any people who would be steer them towards our website uh, that you see after my name on under my face here um and uh the auditions are this week and next week and uh, we also will be performing moana jr in october so we've done 15 live shows in the last 15 months uh, and we have not let the pandemic stop us uh most of them have been outside uh but we truly believe the show must go on and have proven that so thank you. I just wanted to get that out there in case anyone's interested. That's great. Those sound like fantastic shows. And I'm glad that you've been able to keep things going. I know it's been very tough on theater folks. Um, the restrictions are are hefty and the safety concerns are are looming large. And I know it's been very difficult, but it's it's a really great example to see that you've you've been able to persevere and keep going. So congratulations on that. And um Thank you to everyone for taking your time to come and have these conversations with us. I think it's really important for us to stay connected, uh, even though we have to be far apart physically. And uh, in South Jersey, that's always a bit of a struggle. Like Diane said, we're, we're pretty spread out. So it's sometimes difficult for us to feel connected across all eight counties, but um, we, can, we can certainly give it our best try through events like this. So thank you to everyone. I did put the uh, link to the assessment in the chat, as well as a link to submit any events that you've got happening. If you um, have upcoming open calls or upcoming plays or exhibitions or anything that you're working on, you can submit them on the SJCA event calendar and we'll add them in and I'm happy to um, include them there. So it, 
if anyone else has anything that for speak now or forever hold your peace this is may i make a suggestion just for today if everybody shared their facebook um mine is my name (laughs) judith such um and uh, i also have an instagram but if we all shared today like what mark said like I would love to, you know, follow Mark and, you know, if he has stuff to share about his, um, you know, theater productions and what they're doing, you know, I can share it to my Facebook site and we can all share each other's and share our Instagrams as well um, if we want. So I just thought I'd make that suggestion. That's a great idea. If anyone wants to put that information in the chat, um, I can save that and I'll include that with the post event email with this recording and um, some of the links that we talked about and some of the notes from, from things that we discussed today. Um, if everyone is okay with that, I'm, I'm happy to share contact information so that you can reach out to each other uh, after the session as well, if you want to. Um, or you can always feel free to post, like I said, in, in Facebook's um, SJCA's artist page for face, Facebook as well. Okay. So um, anyone else have anything they want to share? We've got like a minute or two? No? Okay, well, thank you again. I'm just gonna put up my little thank you slide here so that we can also say thank you to our sponsors who let us do the work that we do. Um, we're super appreciative for the State Council on the Arts and um, the New Jersey Cultural Trust and Ocean First and PNC and all of our sponsors. Um, and thank you so very much for taking the time today. Always reach out if you have questions, we are here to help. Thanks thank so you, much. Julie. Everyone have a great weekend. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.